Guys, what's going on today? We are going to talk about five different tread patterns for tractor tires. This is a good variety here of different patterns. We're going to tell you all about what you would use them for, what the patterns are called, price points, where to get them, construction, all that kind of thing. So stick around. Oh yeah, and if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure you read through the description. It's right down there as well. You're gonna have links to where you can buy all these tires at, get discount codes, all sorts of good stuff for you tractor owners out there. And don't forget to check out the other videos on my channel. You might like them. Let's go ahead and get the terminology out of the way. Let you know what these tires are called here because that'll help. You'll see these terms used all over the internet if you're tractor shopping or in forums or different websites, that kind of thing. So right here you have the R1 ag style tire, agricultural style tire. You can see it's a, a V-shaped bar pattern here. There's going to be different variations of it, but the general tread pattern is going to be what you see here. Kind of a V that goes back. Very similar to what you see on all the old style and current style, but farming machinery, okay? What's out there in the fields doing the work, that kind of thing. It's a very traditional style of tread pattern and it's been around virtually as long as tractors have been around. Well, at least with rubber tires on them. Maybe, maybe steel tires too. This one here is an R4 industrial style of tread pattern, okay? So it's gonna be a thicker bar. It does share some resemblance over here with the R1, but it's gonna be a thicker, flatter, wider bar, all right? And so we'll get into what the applications are and the differences in a little bit, but that's gonna be the difference that you see here. Again, there's multiple variations of this depending on the tire manufacturer, and maybe there's little hybrids or you know specific applications that uh, would require something that's a little bit of a, a different machine or even in the construction world too, but R4 industrial. This one here is called an R3 tire, all right? So it's a turf tire. There's gonna be a lot of variations of these as well. You're gonna have golf course tires, flotation tires, but turf, as you might expect, is gonna be great for your lawns. You'll see these on a lot of garden tractors as well, or lawn mowers, that kind of thing, but turf tire right here, R3. Next up, this one right here is gonna be called the HDAP. It doesn't really have an R uh, delineation that I know of, but HDAP stands for heavy duty all purpose tire. You can kind of see here, it's a bit of a hybrid. If you look across here, HDAP tire. And the next one actually on my tractor over here, this is gonna be the Carlisle VersaTurf. Again, it doesn't really have an R delineation on there, but as the name might suggest, turf, you're gonna see it does share some similarities with uh, this style of tire right here as well. So the big hitter is gonna be the application. What these excel in, what they do bad in, that kind of thing. But let's get to pricing first so we can get that out of the way. Of course, these are all the same size tire here. They're a 26-12-12 made for the subcompacts, made for large garden tractors like the John Deere X700 series, your Kubota BX. The list kind of goes on. It's a very popular size here for a lot of machines. So if we're talking the same size tire, which this is a really good example here, same price, same price, same price, same price, more money, okay? so. You're gonna have all your traditional styles and then you're gonna have a more advanced style, the VersaTurf over here being the more money, all right? And we're gonna get into that as well. However, I have links for all of these where you can buy these tires, whether it's on Amazon if you want tires and wheels. Miller Tire as well is a great company. Links below to where you can get more information on there, get discounts as well. But if you're looking for a tire in this size, links are down there. Okay, so now let's figure out why this tire over here, the VersaTurf, is gonna cost more than all these other tires right here. It's still a bunch of rubber, right? It doesn't look like there's more material. There's really not anything super special about it if you're just looking at it, right? The difference is gonna be underneath. The construction of it, these are gonna be bias right here. One, two, three, four. These are all bias construction, which is a, an old school way of doing it, okay? Or a cheaper way of doing it as well. And this is gonna be a newer technology. It's gonna be a radial design, which Michelin, I think, kinda came up with a long time ago. But this is gonna be fairly new to the tractor world are the radial tires. So you're gonna see those that terminology thrown around a lot in trailer tires and vehicle tires, that kind of thing. But in the tractor world, it's fairly new. So if we take a look here at the general construction of these tires, you're going to have a radial tire here, the VersaTurf, versus a bias tire. So a bias tire has strands. The elements that make this up are going to go all the way from the bead on one side, all the way around to the bead on the other side. They may um, come across at a diagonal, 30 degree, 45 degrees, somewhere in that ballpark. But over here on the radial, you're going to have different strands, different elements that make this up. And so your contact surface that's up here is going to have a, a completely um, separate existence from what's over on the sidewalls. And what that means is that when you hit bumps and you go up and down and the tire absorbs load and then flexes and, and reshapes, you're gonna have more contact surface 
with the radial tire because this is all one piece. So as it kind of ebbs and flows and is almost like a balloon, you're going to lose contact surface. It's going to increase. You're going to have a bumpier ride. You're going to lose traction at, at, uh, at different moments as well. Over here on the radial, you're going to have more of a little bit of a cushion or a shock absorption. So it's going to be a more comfortable ride with a radial tire, but it's also going to maintain better contact with the ground, which is great for traction, is great for getting power to the ground, and it's going to just perform better in those kinds of scenarios. So some of the benefits that come along with that additional cost are gonna be a more comfortable ride because it will absorb those shocks as you go over it. You're gonna have better traction, more power to the ground because of that additional traction, and then longer tread life as well. Let's go ahead and rank these bad boys on a scale from one to five, from best to worst. I'm gonna put the information below. Let's cover lawns, let's cover paved surfaces, let's cover snow and ice, and let's cover dirt and mud, all right? First thing really quick, I wanna to touch on these VersaTurfs here. If you have a larger tractor, such as a two series, three series, four series, that kind of thing there, or equivalent Kubota, Mahindra, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just a larger tractor besides a subcompact, Right now, you can't get the VersaTurf. However, there are a couple others that are out there. I just had them put on my 4066R. It's gonna be the Goodyear R14, okay? It's gonna be a radial tire again. It's gonna be very similar. You're gonna see a lot of similarities to this tire pattern right here. I just put them on, I just took my R4s off. The other one you're gonna see out there is gonna be called a Galaxy Pro R3 Plus, I believe it's called, okay? So it's gonna be an R3, which is this tread pattern here, but plus. So a little bit on steroids again, and it's Galaxy's take basically on a radial like this as well. So radial construction, a bit of a hybrid there, just another option out there for you to consider. So you may have a hard time remembering all this, so I will put a reference down below in the description of the video too. Let's go ahead and start out with lawn. Now, if you think of a lawn application, you want something to be gentle, right? You don't want anything aggressive on there. So it's not gonna be too hard to imagine that the turf tire here, the R3 is gonna be number one in my book. Now, a very close second, or third, you know, it's almost a, a tie for second place, but I'm gonna give it to the, to the radial here, the, uh, the VersaTurf radial here, followed up by the HDAP, then we're gonna go R4, and then we're gonna go R1. Now, a few notes here, the R1 is going to be bad on your lawn. If you enjoy a nice lawn, if you have a nice lawn, if you don't want it to get ripped up, do not get an R1 tire and think that you're gonna be just mowing your lawn and everything's gonna be hunky-dory. This here is designed for traction. It is not designed to be gentle on a lawn. You're gonna have rust, you're gonna have ripped up areas when you're turning, all that kind of stuff. The R4 is probably the most popular tire out there right now for both subcompacts and compacts. It's gonna be just fine for mowing lawns anything that you drive on your lawn. If it's gonna be wet and soggy and damp, any of these tires here will cause damage, okay? It doesn't really matter how light or heavy your machine is, just don't drive on it when it's wet and soggy. So these two right here will both give you a little bit of a problem if you are doing circles around trees in the same spot over and over. They're a little bit more aggressive, right? Just a little bit, not too much more than this, but that's why I'm giving this a nod and these are second and third. Okay, next up, let's talk about snow and ice. What is the best tread pattern here for those conditions? Can you guess what it is? The best tread pattern far and away, the reason I ended up putting them on my 4066R for this year as well, is gonna be this VersaTurf style of tire right here. Again, on the larger 4R series tractors, I ended up going with a Goodyear R14, but basically the same, very similar tread pattern to that, a radial construction as well. I'm telling you, these were amazing, just amazing in the, in the winter for the snow and the ice around here last year. You know, these tires right here, not so much, all right? So let's go ahead and rank these really quick, but we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and then five. These are the absolute worst right here, the R4 tires. They're just terrible. I've gotten stuck on the side of my driveway before, have been able to not make it up hills, but you're gonna kinda see a, a little bit of a, a similarity amongst these three, right? So quite similar in their tread design. Turfs, believe it or not, are quite good, and I would take them any day over the R4 tires. In fact, I would take even the R1 AGs over here. These are gonna be okay, not super great, um, but they're not gonna be bad, the R1s. So before the VersaTurfs were around, I ran HDAP tires on my John Deere X7 series tractors. Absolutely loved them. I long wondered why they didn't offer these from the factory for the John Deere 1 series, the Kubota BX, that kind of thing, because I think it's such a versatile tread pattern. So I'm really thrilled they came out with this VersaTurf tire. I give it the edge over the HDAP because it is that radial construction as well. One of the biggest problems people have when they're in snow, whether they're pushing it, whether they're driving through it, whether they're plowing it, whatever they're doing is traction. That is your engine, your tractor, your machine. It's got enough power to do the job, all right? You might have the right tool in front to do the job. 
The weak link is most often that traction, that point of contact to the ground. So tires and that kind of application are absolutely critical. And while of course traction is important in all applications, I feel like in snow and ice, it's really, really put to the test and it separates the really good ones from the really bad ones. Let's go ahead and talk about pavement here really quick. I wanna include this pavement being, you know, whether it's asphalt, um, you know, concrete, you know, if you're in your shop, if you're on your driveway, if you're in a big, going down the road, if your main purpose is gonna be traveling on a road a lot or on a hard surface, that's where it's gonna kinda of live, that's what this is really meant for. So this is gonna be number five right here, your R1 Ag Tire. This is gonna be the absolute worst for those paved surfaces, for the roads, for concrete, that kind of thing. Really beyond that, I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle these three right here in the middle, no particular order, and then I'm gonna give the radial here the edge for the absolute best tire that you can get for paved surfaces. The reason the R1 here is really bad is not that it doesn't have traction, doesn't grip, that kind of thing, but it is a little bit bumpier of a ride just based on the construction of it, and it's also gonna wear very, very quickly on those paved surfaces. It's just, it's a very aggressive tire, and when you're turning and twisting and, turn, and just moving around on paved surfaces a lot, it's gonna wear super quickly and wear these out, and it's just not gonna be very practical. You get into the R4s, these are gonna be great. Same thing with the turf, same thing with the HDAP on your paved surfaces. Gonna maintain really good traction, they're gonna wear very well. You're not gonna wear through them quickly, they're gonna last a very long time. The reason I give the radial over here the edge is because of the fact that, again, it's a radial, all right? So you're gonna have a more comfortable ride when you're on those hard surfaces there where if you do come across bumps, you know, dips in the road, whatever the case is that you run into, it's gonna take some of that shock out of there, maintain better traction across your whole operating experience. Okay, so dirt and mud, they kinda of go hand in hand, they kinda of don't, you know, whether it's dry, whether it's a wet, soupy mess, we're gonna go ahead and break this down best to worst. The best tire that you can get for dirt, for mud, are gonna be the R1 Ag style of tread pattern here. They are just an absolute beast. That's just what they were made to thrive in. You think about, again, go back to farming. You know, you see the tractor out in the field there, planting all the corn, harvesting the corn, whatever it might be. They're gonna have this style right on there because you never know what the conditions are gonna be, but you know it's gonna be mud, it's gonna be dirt. Let's go ahead and rank these really quick. You're gonna have the R1 being the best, the VersaTurf being the second best, the HDAB being the third best, R4, fourth best, and then unfortunately, your traditional turf tire is gonna follow up last. Now this is a little bit different, but I did have a skid steer recently with these tires. You gotta check out that video. I got it buried in mud out of my hunting lease. It was uh, quite humorous there, but these tires right here, they just, they just have a lot of limitations, okay? Now keep in mind a skid steer is a very, very heavy piece of equipment. It'll sink like a rock and that's exactly what it did. You know, these VersaTurfs over here had the self-cleaning cleats on here again, similar to the Goodyear R14 or the Galaxy Pro. They're gonna have just a good hybrid setup on there. The HDAPs again have a lot of areas for grip. They're not gonna clean out as well as this VersaTurf is over here. I just am not a huge fan of the R4s. It's unfortunate. They're on so many tractors in the subcompact and compact world. But of course, you wouldn't expect a turf tire like this to perform very well in dirt or mud. Now on dry, hard dirt, if you're just going into the woods down a trail, it's gonna be just fine, all right? But if we're getting into those muddy situations, this is where it's really gonna fill up fast. The cleats are, they're not gonna clean out, and you're just gonna be sitting there spinning your wheels. So a good question that you might ask yourself is why is the R4 tread pattern so extremely popular? Okay, and I think it's a combination of reasons, right? Because tractors are used in a lot of different applications. You might use it for mowing your lawn. You might use it for pushing snow. You might use it in the woods, you know, all the above on paved surfaces. So the R4 is really the all-purpose tire in my opinion. Yes, this is heavy duty all-purpose, HDAP. That's what it stands for. But it's not really viewed as a tractor or a, a heavy equipment tire. So you get folks that see this tire, this is what they expect to be on a tractor anymore. It's become so popular in the last 15 years or so that probably 80% or more of the tractors out there are rocking an R4 tread pattern. But they really don't excel at a whole lot except for not failing at most things. You know, they're gonna give you really good uh, wear life. You know, you can go hundreds if not thousands of hours Front tires are always gonna wear quicker than back tires are. You know, you're turning, you're putting more load with a loader, that kind of thing on there. They're just gonna wear out, they're smaller, it, just, you know, just everything. But the rear tires especially, you can go a thousand, maybe even more than that, depending on the applications that you're using it for. 
but I want you guys to see this from a different perspective here that you don't have to be stuck with the tires that come on your machine, all right? You have the ability to change them out to keep a second set of wheels and tires on hand too. So if you have a, a spring and summer setup and a fall and winter setup, or you have a month worth of projects that you wanna do in the woods, so you wanna put a more aggressive tire on there and then switch back to a different tread pattern for the rest of the year, you can really mix that up just don't stranglehold yourself and think you have to stick with just the tires that are on your machine right now. And now I know that does come as a cost, but it's something to kind of plan for, right? When you look at a machine, you shouldn't only be thinking, well, I get the tractor and then that's it. Tractors are just the, the basic tool, all right? You can outfit them in so many different ways on the back end, on the front end, and of course, even the wheels and tires. Well, you got to take a good look there side by side by side by side by side, I think that's it, of all the different tread patterns that are out there. It certainly doesn't encompass everything that's on the market, but it's a pretty good variety. And it kind of gives you a little bit more insight, hopefully, on where each style of tread pattern will excel. I'd be very curious, very interested, and I think the other viewers would as well. If you would leave a comment below with your own experience of these tires, I know we all have different experiences. This is just my two cents on the situation. I've used all these tires in different situations, applications over the years, so it's kind of my own take on it. I get a lot of tractors in here, hundreds of tractors in here with different tread patterns on them as well, so I can see kind of how they last over time too. It just gives me a really unique perspective to be able to share that information with you. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure you read through that description as well, okay? Links to where you can get all these tires and other really cool tractor products and check out the other videos on my channel. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Now, really quickly, if you are interested in getting more of that lateral, that side-to-side -side stability, one of the options you can look into on the 261212, so the tires that are this size, all of them that we're seeing in this video here, are gonna be a wheel, adapter for dual wheels where you can fit it right inside there just like this take a look okay it comes with all the hardware you need where you'll just bolt it right through long bolts right through that one right to your other tire here and get a lot of additional stability there side to side you can use a dual wheel adapter just like this to get a lot more stability on hills okay side to side can be very dangerous can be very concerning for a lot of folks out there so whether it's wheel spacers dual wheels you know there is the potential there to shorten the lifespan of the rear axle of your machine but really that's a decision that you need to make as the operator right if you're going to choose safety if you have really dangerous situations there where you need to accomplish your work you can either add spacers or you can add dual wheels and get that safety measure there and just take the risk use common sense regardless if you want to get this dual wheel adapter kit you can do so at millertire.com link below you get five percent off with discount code gwt